on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shine on me. Yeah. Let the light from the lighthouse shine on me. Just wave your hand before heaven and tell him to shine on you. Tell him to shine on me. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come unto me and rest. Lay down thy weary one, lay down head upon my breast and then I came to Jesus just as I was I was weary worn and sad but I found in him a resting place and he has made me glad Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. There you go, Ray. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes. Yes.
reading it from the Amplified Version, beginning at verse 1. In the beginning, before all time, was the Logos, the Word, Christ. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God himself. He was continually existing in the beginning, co-eternally with God. All things were made and came into existence through him. And without him, not even one thing was made that has come into being. In him was life, and the power to bestow life. And the life was the light of humanity. The light shines on in the darkness, and the darkness did not understand it, or overpower it, or appropriate it or absorb it as is unreceptive to it. The light shines on in the darkness. For the next few moments, I want to lift up a verse 9 for our consideration. There it was, the true light the genuine, perfect, steadfast light, which coming into the world enlightens everyone. One more time, verse nine. There it was, the true light, the genuine, perfect, steadfast light, which coming into the world enlightens everyone. For the next few moments, I want to talk from the theme, the true light. The true light. You may receive your seats. The true light. As you're aware, many people will be gathering all over the country, and particularly in those areas that will experience the total solar eclipse. Matter of fact, they say that hotel rooms, while being price gouged, are completely at capacity in those areas. They say that car rentals are completely all gone. There are no more Airbnbs left. As people flock to those places in North America that will have total eclipse passing over Mexico, the United States, and Canada. Total eclipse for three minutes and 38 seconds. They are buying t-shirts. They're buying those little goofy glasses to see the eclipse. A four minute phenomenon. And they bought a $700 room, which on Wednesday will cost $40. It is interesting, but if one gives some deeper thought around the eclipse, one can only imagine how we would view an eclipse today if it were not for mainstream media letting us know it was coming. 
if it were not for the current and modern astronomy explaining to us what was happening. I could only imagine primitive human beings seeing the eclipse and thinking end of world. The day becomes night for no reason. In many cases, not a cloud in the sky and the sun is hidden and wrapped around the sun you see the fiery blazes coming around the moon and it looks like the moon is on fire it is interesting that maybe as people were viewing Calvary, if one reads the record of what takes place on the day of the death of the Lord, is it possible that when they said the sun refused to shine, they were actually describing a solar eclipse that happened simultaneously with Calvary. Just a thought. What one has to realize is that light is a peculiar biblical metaphor. Biblically, light is a metaphor for life, for happiness, righteousness, or understanding. I was going to use the word enlightenment. And my wife told me to make sure that everybody understood what I was saying. So. Wives have a way of bringing us down to earth. Because my mind is somewhere else and I'm thinking something and my wife looks at me sometimes. She said, are you speaking to impress yourself? Because I don't understand you. That is an exact quote, I find you. <laughs> The oddity about that is I've been talking this way my whole life. It is literally my vocabulary. Although I can aggravate people because of it. The truth is that light is that metaphor. And what one has to get, if you lay any stop to the Genesis story, one has to realize that all light begins with God and ends with God. That light comes from the Lord God, the Father of lights, the creator and sustainer of the heavens. Light comes from the Lord God. That's what James would say in James chapter 1, verse 17. The psalmist would pick it up in Psalm 27 and say, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my refuge and my fortress. Of whom shall I be afraid or of whom shall I dread? Light is that metaphor that we need to hold on to today. Light is a symbol of life, of knowledge, and goodness. It's a symbol of life itself, of knowledge, and goodness. Um, Yale uses as his symbol Urim and Thurim, which is truth and light. Jesus is 
the true light. And true in the Greek uh, is the word alethinos, which means real, true, and genuine. And what one really has to know is that as the true light, when one sees it, one needs to seize upon it and to see what God may be revealing to us in the light. The true light is a reference to God who was manifested in Jesus above which there is no other. Now other faiths, and I have nothing against them, have their own sense of this light and enlightenment and who they believe to be true light. But for believers, Jesus is the true light. And allow me to digress for a moment because when you see a fellow believer, you can nearly see their light before you see them. You see their light. And, 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 and one of the things about the light that God has endowed us with, it is not dependent upon the physical appearance to be attractive. Because the light of God in the individual makes them even more than flesh. And so too does the darkness that rests upon individuals that can make that which is physically beautiful ugly. Because the spirit of darkness rests within them. Please, before you dismiss my point, you too have the remarkable gifting of likeness that you can see light and darkness. And many times, unbeknownst to you, you are repulsed by the darkness even if the individual is talking correctly. There's something about them that your inner being rejects. Something within you. I don't know why I don't really care for that person. I, I don't know why they, they just, something about them. I can't tell you what it is. I, I don't know what it is. You, you, no prophetic gift needed. No, no depth of, of, of any kind of word of knowledge. You, you do not have to speak in tongues or wave your hand. There's something within you that does not resonate with that which is in them. They overwhelmed by the darkness and the darkness in them keeps you from being able to be close to them. And unfortunately, some of us have trained ourselves and we have replaced our, our darkness radar with a darkness love. To the point where you you have some people that are excited by the darkness. I've heard some people say, no, they're too soft to be with me. They're, they're not rough enough. And what they mean is, I have an attraction to that other side. And then they wonder, why they keep picking the same nothing. And with each selection process hoping to change someone that refuses to be changed because you knew who they were before you ever entered the relationship 
and you walked into it knowing full well that the darkness hid any kind of light that could have been there. There, there is this light sensitiveness that believers need to grasp through Jesus. Here, here, for those of you who understand me, for believers, I have said that Jesus is the true light. John chapter 8, verse 12 says, Jesus spake again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. For he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Jesus says in John 9, verse 5, John chapter 9, verse 5, he says, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. I'll come back to this later, but the extension of the divine light that has been given to you by your relationship with Jesus means that you now take Jesus' place in the world as the light of the world. There are three important elements of enlightenment found in the sacred text. And let me see if I can press them out as I begin this new series. Three important elements of enlightenment found in the sacred text. The first of which is something that I want you to grab hold of because I think some of you have entered into the light but not cognitively. Meaning, I believe that you have relationship with God but it is not at the conscious level where you know how to be in relationship with God. You have it, but you have not learned how to be it. You, you are almost still in the filling out stages with God even though you've been in relationship for years. Three things. Number one, he is the pre-existing essence of God's light in the darkness. Jesus is the pre-existing essence of God's light in the darkness. Now, if one were to go back, and I ask that you do this on your own, read the beginning of John, we get so enamored with logos, that is word made flesh, that we miss light. Jesus, God, pre-existed that which we see. So from eternity to eternity, God exists. And the only way that humanity is humanity, birth in an earth suit that is capable of survival in this climate on this planet at this time, that we know is capable of more than breathing air because it actually does so in the wound on its way into this terrestrial environment. Babies don't actually breathe the rare air until they hit the air as they leave the womb. And they take their first breath on this side of the terrestrial ball. And most times the doctor makes them cry. Might be a sign. It won't be the last. Here it is. 
Genesis. And God formed humanity from the ground. And God made them. And then God did what? He <laughs> breathed into him. And man did not become breath. He became what? A living soul. The living soul can only exist as it carries the living light of God. So that every soul born on this planet has a piece of God in it. Let me use some Transformers language which might help some of you young folk. Every one of us has a piece of the AllSpark. It is that very essence of God that pre-existed your arrival here that animates your flesh now. And it is that part of you that longs relationship with the greater existence that is above you, around you, and that wants to thrive within you. So that your soul is always longing to be connected to the source. There's something in you that wants the God connection. Something in you that needs it, that feeds on it, that thrives in it, and that the closer you are to it, the deeper you feel, the better you feel about life at its worst and even at its best because you need to be connected to God and as you are connected to God, you find joy. Now your flesh, your flesh will try to fill that void with other things telling you that this will make up for what you don't have. So if you do a little this and a little, little that, if you taste a little this and taste a little that, if you go up here or down here, this will make you feel better. And the reality is, no matter what you do, there is nothing that can replace a genuine connection to the divine. That which is pre-existent wants to be involved in your existence. And the closer you get to God, the more joy, peace, happiness you will find. Now, now, I don't romanticize joy, peace, and happiness because I'm not trying to tell you that, that this is going to all of a sudden make every day perfect. I just went to Maryland to bury my brother in love, my brother. He was like family to me. But what I know is that he was a modern day Lazarus. That God had literally raised him from the dead. That 25 years ago, he was given that instruction to set your house in order, you will die. And that through the prayers and modern science, he not only got Hezekiah's 15 years, but he got 25. <laughs> Dr. Edward P. Harding Jr. went home to be with the Lord, and one of the things I want to share with his congregation that I shared with you so that you be in full knowledge of it 
never think that healing is eternal. Every healing done on this earth is temporary. Remissions are temporary. Don't worry about it. It's a fact. Let me break this down to you. There is no individual you can point to that Jesus healed that is still living. I'll wait for you. <laughs> if his healings were temporary, so what this joy means is that we get to live in the peace of God no matter what the flesh has to deal with. I do not have to lose my mind because things go wrong. I do not have to be upset because life gives me something I think is unbearable. Because I have a God who will bear it with me. I have a God who will share my trial and my struggles, who will be with me even unto the end of the age. And because of that, I am never alone. So I connect to that which is pre-existent knowing that he will take me from this life into an eternal life existing in that realm and not in flesh. I, I, I know some of you are saying this is a little deep this morning, Bishop. The Lord told me on my way to the pulpit this morning, he said he wanted me to be authentically me. Number two, he is the personification of God's day spring. He is the personification of God's day spring. I'm talking Jesus. He says, John 12, verse 46, I have come as a light into the world that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. The word day spring is the dawning of day. Of light and he is the personification of that light so that we do not have to walk in darkness we are able to walk in the full cognition of the divine light and be embraced by the light and live in the light I, 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 I give you the third and then I want to give you an ABC which I will be working with for the next few weeks. Uh, just, but, but stay with me for a moment because I'm laying something out here. Number three. He is the personal example of God's demand. He is the personal example of God's demand. What, what, what do you mean, Reverend? Well, the demand of God is that he be light. And he is the example of light in the darkness. Light of the world, you came down from glory. You open our eyes, let me see. And what I have to realize is, as he is the light of the world, I too am witnessing him fulfilling the divine demand. Why is it a divine demand? Because darkness had overwhelmed the world. 
There were more people living and dwelling in darkness that God needed light. And he sent his own son to meet the demand for light in human form. Okay. A, B, and C, real quick. A is simply this, the pre-existent light is to be worshiped. The pre-existent light is to be worshiped. That we've got to understand that the worship of God is our connection to the pre-existent light. Now someone will say, Reverend, how do I worship God? Well, you, it's a good start, you're here. It's a good start. You're listening. It's a good start. But, but you can worship God in your home. You can worship God on your job. You can worship God when you're driving down the street. You can worship God anywhere. Anytime's a good time to worship God. I can sit still and enter into a place with God. I've, I've, um, I've been in the kind of person all my life that understood what it means to be in deep relationship with God. And I've shared some stuff with you and I'm going to share even more over the next few weeks. Some of people, when they listen to me talk, they get a little unnerved because of some of the things I honestly believe. I believe that the distance between you and I right now is non-existent. Because I'm as close to you as you will allow me to be in your spirit right now. And for those of you receiving my words, you're receiving them at a deeper level. So that the time-space continuum may make it appear to be that we are separated, but we are not. Which is why you can sense me and I can sense you. You know what? You know why you know genuine and non-genuine in people? Because you do not have to physically touch them to be touched by them. I am um, my my brother. You don't mind me. Just I want to use you for a second. My brother came up one day. And he was coming back to greet me, and he hugged me. And I started crying. I couldn't let him go. And what he didn't know is that I already felt him connected to me. And I knew we were connected. And I felt it months. And I've felt it for years. I've always known it. But when he came up to hug me, to tell me that, that he was with me, because we were physically close enough to each other, I could not only sense what had already been there, but I experienced it in full, y'all don't get it. Let me help somebody, I'm trying to walk down your street. You know the difference between stuff you did before you got married? Y'all will get it on the way home, come on. <laughs> and what happens after marriage? The connection is different from flesh to spirit. And when in relationship you are no longer connected in spirit, flesh won't even matter. So that you can be physically next to another individual and never feel them or their presence. 
Okay, I'm going so deep now. Some of y'all are like, I'm gonna have to listen to this again. I'm, go, I'm going, I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. The Lord told me to be authentic. I'm being authentic. So, so number two, this is the B portion. This is the B portion. I'm setting you up for something. The B portion is that we are to personify the light by our walk. So as Jesus was the personification of the light, we are to be the personification of the light. Can, can I say this to you? Some of y'all going to be upset when I say it, but I'm going to tell y'all this. There's sometimes your light is so cloudy and dark that folk don't know if you the light Matter of fact, when some people heard you even went to church, they're like, you? <laughs> they, they might ask, what church you go to? I said, oh. <laughs> Ephesians 5 and 8 says, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord? Walk as children of the light. What does it mean to walk in the light? I'm going to break this down over the weeks, trust me. What does it mean to walk in the light? To walk in the light of Jesus is to follow his precepts, practices, and power by continuous growth in his grace. Walk in the light, beautiful light. Come where the dew drops of mercy shine bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. One more time, we will walk. In the light, hey, hey, beautiful light, come where the dew drops of mercy. Shine. Come on, Leroy, come on, shine, shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light. In the light, beautiful light, come where a mercy shine by day. Oh. One last time, now put your hands together. We will walk in the light. That's it. Come where. It's right there. I'm, 
I'm really done. I'm really done. But since I said A, B, and C, I don't want to let you leave here on, without the last the C. And I'm just going to say it and I'm done. So I told you that you have to what? You have to worship the pre-existing light is to be worshiped. You have to personify the light by your walk. And then, um, then C here is you have to perpetuate the light by your witness. In other words, you have to tell somebody that light has come in to the darkness and that they do not have to walk in darkness and stumble in darkness because light has entered into the world. And when you get to that point, you're going to do Matthew 5 and 16. Can, can, can I get a witness in here? Look at somebody and say, neighbor, yeah. let your light shine. Yeah. You didn't get it. Let your light shine. Yeah. I, I'm done, y'all. Matthew 5, 16 said, let your light shine before people that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So God, every day, I want to let my light shine. I want to be a witness that God is good. And I want to go back to my Sunday school lesson. And I want to be able to see this little light of mine. You didn't get it. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Well, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine. The doors of the church open. Oh. This little light of mine. I extend an invitation today. You can come by letter, by Christian experience. If you're looking for a church home, I want to invite you. Well, let it shine. Everywhere I go. this fellowship call us write us we want you to be a member of this church and of this fellowship i love you all the love of the lord i know that's a little deep go back and listen to it again i want to invite you into this conversation about the light i have simply given you the foundational thoughts and let me recap something for you the pre-existing God personified in his son and now personified in those who are believers in his son. And we are to be an intimate heart, spirit, soul relationship with God. whole sermon, one sense. We are to be in a deeper relationship with God. 
And I want you to bow your heads. Because I want you to ask yourself, how's my relationship with God? Am I where I should be? Can I really say that my light is as bright and as brilliant as it should be? Am I unsure if there is a light shining in me? With those questions, I want you now to ask God, Lord, give me this light that the world might see you in me. Give me this light that the world might see you in me. Those of you that have it, I want you to pray this way. Lord, increase my shine. Lord, increase my shine that the world might see you in me. Lord, increase my shine. My shine. Let me shine. Let, let me. Hey, my mama. Lord, increase my shine that the world might see you in me. So, Father, we thank you for this day and this word. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for opening us up to new possibilities and to divine revelation. We love you. We thank you. We hold you dear in our hearts. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen.